Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Brain summary discussion, and we also have the fire-type code monster that was revealed probably about 10 days ago. It was revealed quite some time ago. I have been slacking on these uh, Vrain's future discussion videos, I guess you can say. I did not do the 24 cast list last week, so that's where we're going to start. And then we are going to get into the 25 summary and cast list, and then we are going to talk about the new fire type decode talker monster that was revealed that most likely will be making an appearance very soon. If you're only interested in the fire code monster, I don't want to give away the name for, for spoiler reasons um, in case you accidentally clicked on this video. I will have a timestamp down below for when I talk about that section, so if you want to skip me rambling about the cast list and the summaries and my speculation on that, that's perfectly fine. So anyway, we are going to begin. Again, if you do not want any spoilers, this is your last chance to click off this video. Three, two, one. Here it is. So here is the episode, and thank you to DMC for translating both the 24 cast list last week and the 25 cast list about a half an hour ago. This is the episode that is happening tomorrow, so I'm not going to really speculate too much about it because, you know, we're going to be seeing it in less than 24 hours. So the fate shouldered by the Dark Mask. Dr. Gnome uses his Helix deck to turn the Goki monster's powerful attacks against themselves, putting Go Onizuka into a pinch. At the same time, the other members of the Knights of Hanoi also show up in Link Vrains and indiscriminately attack the citizens. So that could be the re that could be what distracts Playmaker, hopefully, from interfering in this duel because he's going to go and stop the the Knights of Hanoi fodder. That I'd assume is going to be. I'm, I'm assuming it's the Knights of Hanoi fodder because the only other knights that we have on this list are Vira. And the fact that it's not, you know, I don't think Vyra is going to be dueling a bunch of, it, it just wouldn't make sense. So it's most likely going to be fodder that Playmaker is going to go, you know, the generic knights that we saw in episode two, that Playmaker is maybe going to, you know, give a speech to go and then go and, and kick some ass and no pun intended. But anyway, the cast list, <laughs> Yusaku, I, Kusanagi, Naoki, Aoi, Akira, so the Zizens are back, that's awesome, Go, Gnome, Vyra, Kitamura, Kitamura unfortunately back. The MC, the announcer, lots and lots of extras. So that is episode 24. The fight, and we know this will be the final part of the Dr. Gnome and Go Onizuka duel because Dr. Gnome is not speaking in episode 25. So for those of you that have not really enjoyed 23, I think a majority of people have enjoyed it, but there were a few people that really, really, really did not like it. So for those of you that, you know, have not really enjoyed the duel so far, at least you only have to uh, sit through it for one more episode. But myself, I'm very excited because I really don't know which way this duel is going to go. Um, again, no pun intended, uh, even, th <laughs> even though I really do believe that Go Onizuka is going to be able to pull it out, and I am rooting for him. I really do hope he is able to get the win. So not going to spend too much time there because, again, in less than 24 hours, a majority of you, you know, most of my videos do get watched as soon as I upload them, but then they also get watched sporadically throughout the week until the final episode for that discussion airs. So I'm sure a lot of you will probably be watching this after 24 airs, so I'm not going to, and I'll be talking about 24 really in depth in the review tomorrow, so we're going to move on to 25, because 25 is very, very exciting. Virus deck operation. Aoi is aware of the battle between the Knights of Hanoi and Playmaker, but she doesn't know whether she should fight as Blue Angel or keep her promise to Akira and not go into Link Vrains. However, Emma then appears before her. What is Aoi's answer after her meeting with Emma? So the two main girls, the two main heroines right now of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, not only are they going to be talking, not only have they already talked in Link Vrains, but this is going to be a conversation that's going to happen in the real world. And I'm going to give my thoughts on that. That is very, very exciting. I'm going to give my thoughts on that in a little bit. Uh, the cast, Yusaku, I, Kusanagi, Go, Aoi, Akira... Emma, Vira and Faust, Hayami, Frog and Pigeon, great to see them back, the <laughs> the MC announcer, and that is it. If you do not remember who Hayami is, I don't blame you, it's the Akira fangirl that spilled coffee on him, that worked in the office, um, maybe it was episode 16, I think she only appeared in one episode, but uh, she, was, she was a pretty funny character, so every female character that we have so far in Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, maybe besides Robopi, is speaking 
in this episode, as someone else had pointed out. So that is that is really cool to see. This is going to be most likely another plot episode, which, again, this could be the episode that brings in the new ending. If you haven't heard, we are getting a new ending. I did a video on that if you just want to go to my channel and watch that, or it'll probably be the end card suggested video on, on this video. Uh, feel free to watch that. But yeah, we are getting a new ending. So it does feel like this is the start of a new arc, even though episode 23, the Gnome Go Duel, has felt like the start of the new arc. But this is the point where... The characters are now really, really having to decide what they want to do in this fight. And Aoi is going to go through kind of an ultimatum here where does she disobey Akira one last time and put everything on the line and fight as Blue Angel and, and fight for her life and fight for Playmaker? Or does she obey her brother's wishes and, and not go into Link Frames? I mean, she knows how much he really does care about her, especially after his duel with Playmaker. So what does she do? So she's going to be in a very, very tough position. And who comes to give her guidance but Big Sister Emma? Big Sister Emma, because Emma has just been like this big sister figure to me for Aoi this entire show. I mean, we've really only seen them interact a little bit, but even when they're not interacting, Emma is still acting like that mentor where Akira wanted to go back. Remember, I think it was in episode 17 when Aoi had entered as Blue Angel and was going to duel the AI. Akira wanted to go back and Emma prevented him from doing so. Emma literally said to him, like, look, your sister is a grown woman. She can, she can do what she wants. You can't really baby her anymore. We need to get to the core of the computer. And Akira agreed. So Emma has a lot of power over the Zizens. And because, remember, even Akira knows Emma's ghost girl persona. I Akira is probably the only one. Even Playmaker and Kusanagi couldn't figure out that Emma is ghost girl. And I wonder if Emma's going to reveal that to Aoi just like she revealed it to Akira. She has to have been... I, I want to know more about how Emma and Akira met and why they're such good friends because it seemed like early on their relationship was definitely a lot more um, passive passive-aggressive, I guess you could say, with Emma insulting Akira, Emma getting Akira in trouble with her uppers, so she's not really a great friend, clearly, unless there was something that, you know, happened with them. Maybe they were in a relationship. I mean, Akira was 26, so maybe they were in a relationship and something went sour and, you know, they've stayed friends, but obviously... Emma maybe is still a little bitter about it. You know, a, a cool backstory like that would be really awesome to see. But I just wonder if Emma is going to reveal to Aoi, since Akira already knows, and Akira most likely is the only one that knows about Emma's ghost girl persona. And that would be kind of cool if Aoi and Emma revealed to each other their Link Vrain's personas, and then they both enter Link Vrain's, and they appear before Playmaker, and they say to him, we want to fight for you. And then you have the group of Playmaker, Go, Emma, and Aoi, and that is your new kind of team Playmaker that would be awesome because we've wanted to see a team form for quite some time. So I, I'm very excited for this. But at the same time, I'm, I'm not going to go back and say, oh yeah, Emma is this you know great ethical character. I still stand by what I've said about Emma a lot. And that is that I do not trust her one bit. And I don't think anyone really trusts her. So this at the same time is kind of terrifying because Aoi is a character who you would imagine does not have much self-confidence. You would imagine is maybe easy to give into peer pressure, maybe easy to manipulate. I'm not saying that's what Emma's goals are going to be, but I'm going to be watching the interaction between Emma and Aoi very, very carefully because it, it's just, I've seen characters like this get kind of mentally, especially Emma. Emma is so conniving and she's so sneaky and I feel like Aoi is so innocent and is the exact opposite way. So I really am going to be watching this interaction to see if Emma is going to maybe start corrupting her, if maybe Emma is in this for her own goals, whatever those goals may be, who really knows at this point, but I am so, so stoked to see Emma and Aoi interact. A lot of people thought that Emma and Aoi were going to be dueling because we got an initial line, and the literally the only line we got about this episode was, Emma appears before Blue Angel, or something like that, and so literally it sounded, it sounded like, oh crap, these two might duel, but I held off on making a video about it because there was just not enough information, and honestly, I've been slacking this last week with videos. It's also interesting to note that the writer for episode 26 is the same writer for 25, which is Maikawa Atsushi. He also wrote episodes 6, 7, 16, and 7. In case you forgot, 6 was Aoi's big debut plot episode, 7 was Blue Angel's duel, 16 was Blue Angel's return, 17 was Blue Angel's duel versus the AI. He's writing 25 and 26, so I would bet a lot of money that Blue Angel is going to duel someone in 26, whether that's Vyra, whether that's Faust, because they're both 
back speaking in this episode, which is really, really cool. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. They're the only knights in this episode, so this should be another really enjoyable, hopefully enjoyable, plot episode. So anyway, that's all I have to say about 24 and 25. I cannot wait to talk to you all about that down below, and I can't wait to talk to you all about this as well. We're probably getting pretty um, long into this video, so I'm going to try to make this short, but the new fire-type decode talker monster is called Power Code Talker. It is a fire cybers link three effect monster, and here's its effects. You need three monsters to link summon it. Once per turn, you can target one face-up monster. That monster's effects are negated until the end of this turn, and its other effect, once per turn, during damage calculation, when this card battles an opponent's monster, you can tribute one monster this card points to. During this damage calculation only, this card's attack becomes double its original attack. So ladies and gentlemen, I've seen a lot of people say that this is the best Decode Talker monster we have gotten so far. Tough for me to say that because, again, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this is the best one we've gotten just because, as you guys know, this area of the game, of the show, not my forte at all. But just to kind of break it down, which I like to do mainly, <laughs> mainly just for myself because I feel like I learn better. And usually when I do break it down, you guys still correct me and, I've, and I do get things wrong, but... The effects do seem to be really, really good. So, first of all, if your opponent has a monster that you... Because usually nowadays, the, the real strength in these monsters is not their attack. It's usually their effect. You can immediately negate any effect. So, you can basically cripple any of your opponent's monsters. Only one, but still, that's really awesome. So, if you're going up against a monster that has, you know, 2,500 attack points and has a really sick effect... Not only can you negate that effect and literally cripple it for the turn, but then if you have a monster that's linked to Power Code Talker, you can sacrifice that monster, and then you can double Power Code's attack, so you can inflict 2,100 points of damage on a monster that not only was stronger than Power, Co power Code at the start of the turn, but maybe had a really, really good effect, maybe a protecting effect, or really anything. So that seems to, be, seems to me to be a really, really good um, monster, And then if you are going up against a monster that only has like 1500 attack, not only could you just abuse that monster and cripple it, but then again, you can double power codes attack. And so you really get a 4600 beater if you can keep refreshing your links and you can keep summoning monsters to power codes links. So that while this card doesn't have an effect that lets it see it's a very and that's why it's called power code because it doesn't have any effects that protect itself. So so if you do happen to run out of monsters that are pointing to its link and you can't double its attack, then all you need to do is get over it, which isn't yeah. but then again, you know, I I don't know. It's it's obviously going to be a fair trade. It's not going to have these crazy crazy effects, but I I think the effects are good. As for the design, I like it. To be honest, I'm getting a little I don't want to say sick, but I'm getting a little bored of the the code talkers. I wish Firewall was getting some upgrades, but the fact that we're most likely only going to get two more power code, not power code, two more code talker um, upgrades because of the, the different types. I think we've gotten like four of the six so far. Then again, we could get like a mix of two down the road, but... You know, we'll see. It's similar to you say where he got all the the junk warrior upgrades and the the junk upgrades before he really got. And I'm not saying junk upgrades because they were bad. Before he, <laughs> that's just that's just the type of monster they were. Before he got the really really awesome stardust upgrades. So the firewall upgrades are gonna come, but I'm probably more so excited for them at this point than the the code monsters. But this also means that Yusaku most likely will be dueling very soon, maybe in episode 26. Who really knows? But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Leave all your thoughts down below on whether you think Power Code is a good monster, whether you uh, like the effect, whether you think it's the best Code Talker we've gotten, whether you, what, what Code Talker monster do you think is the best in terms of, you know, real-life gameplay. Let me know all your thoughts on predictions for the duel tomorrow, predictions for the episode next week, how you think that Emma Owie interaction might play out. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I will talk to you down below, and I hope you have an amazing day.